important video for you guys today. Uh, this video is going to be all about sun care and protecting your skin when you're exposed to the sun. Now I know this is common sense to most people but I really feel that it's so important to bring up, especially considering it's summer here in Australia at the moment. And I know that so many of the younger generation tend to be very blasé about sun care and think, oh you know, it won't affect me or I'll be fine, I just want to have a gorgeous tan. And I know that so many people have this kind of mindset and this video is really about hopefully trying to change your mindset and just to reiterate how important it is to look after your skin. The most worrying thing I guess about the sun is you don't notice the effects of it straight away. You don't notice it the next week or the next month. It's going to be years down the track that you start to notice the effects that the sun has had on your skin and obviously by that stage it is way too late. The main reason why I wanted to create this video is that my mum's actually just been diagnosed with skin cancer and seeing what she's gone through, I actually went to Perth with her a few weeks ago while she had surgery to remove it. They're not 100% sure yet if it's if they've got it all but just seeing the stress and the pain that she's gone through has been a very big eye-opener um, I definitely did have that mindset especially five ten years ago thinking oh it won't happen to me I'll be fine but since seeing what my mum's gone through it has definitely opened my eyes up and I really just want to make you guys aware and hopefully try and prevent what my mum's going through at the moment. We'll get down to business. Um, obviously sun is one of the most damaging things that can happen to your skin. Yes you do need vitamin D but don't have to go out and bake in the sun for hours to get your vitamin D supply. <laughs> Sun damage can obviously cause premature aging. I have seen people, especially in Bali and Thailand, that look like leather basically on the beach. Um, it's definitely not a good look and as I said it's not something that you're going to notice straight away. It's something that's going to happen in 10 years time and you'll start to notice the effects of it. So premature aging is a massive one. Also it can be extremely damaging on your eyes, it can cause cataracts which can lead to blindness and things like that. And also ex long exposure to the sun, obviously it's going to burn your skin, but sunburn is or sun rays are actually radiation. So it's going to actually suppress your immune system and you won't be able to fight off infections and colds and flus and things as well as your body should be able to. And if you guys still desperately want to have a tan, get a fake tan. There's some incredible brands out there at the moment. My current favorite is Bondi Sands. It is an Australian brand and I do have a review of their products. I'll um, again link it in the description box below. <laughs> so I'll talk a little bit um, more about the technical side of the sun rays which people don't really tend to know about. Um, sun rays are actually ultraviolet rays, so ultraviolet light. Um, same as tanning beds, they use the UV rays to get tan and things like that. Um, ultraviolet light is actually invisible to the naked eye. The, the light that we can see is it's measured in nanometers and it's between 7 and 400 nanometers. Whereas ultraviolet light, the, the UVA rays and UVB rays are different. There's a longer one and a shorter one. And they're measured from 400 to 320 or 320 to 290 nanometers. So they're definitely invisible to the eye. Even on days when it is very overcast and very cloudy, you might think, oh, it's fine. I don't need to wear sun cream today because it's cloudy. There's no sun. But just because you can't see it doesn't mean that it's not there. So ultraviolet rays are invisible to the naked eye. So UVA rays actually have deeper penetration into your skin. They're more of the tanning ray and they are the ray that is definitely going to cause the most damage to your skin. But that doesn't mean that the UVB rays aren't damaging as well. They definitely are. Both are definitely linked to causing cancer. The World Health Organization, as I said, has definitely proven that UV rays are carcinogenic, so it will cause cancer. So if you do um, use a solarium, which I highly recommend you don't use, I've never been to a solarium, they actually increase your rate of skin cancer by 75%. I, I never forget seeing this girl on the news. Um, she was an Australian girl and I still remember her name. It was Claire Oliver and she passed away. I'm actually going to bring it up on my phone. Just I want to make sure I get everything right. I will link some videos in the description box of her while she was still living, telling people about solariums and just pleading with them not to go. Um, she passed away when she was 26. 
I think it was in 2007 that she passed away. So I still remember that story from then. I'll zoom in. That's her there. But yeah, I'll, I'll link all the information about that in the description box for you guys. So many of you don't actually know that you can actually go onto the Bureau of Meteorology and click on whatever state you live in or what even suburb you live in and it will tell you what the UV rating is for that day. They recommend that if the UV rating is over three, I'm pretty sure it's three, that you wear sun cream, you cover up, you wear a hat, everything like that. Now, here in Australia, we pretty much have the highest UV rating in the world. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, they have broken the UV ratings into categories. Zero to three is classed as low. Th three to six is where you definitely need to start wearing sun cream is moderate. Six to eight is around the high level. Eight to 11 is very high. And then 11 up to 20 is extreme. Now, most days where I live, the UV rating is 15. So it's definitely in the extreme rating. And it's definitely something that is very important to consider. I mean, as I said, so many people are so blasé about the sun and they think, I'm just going outside for 10 minutes just to hang out the washing, I'll be fine. But it only takes five minutes for your skin to start to burn. Even if you can't see it, even if it doesn't look like you've burnt, the effects are still going to be there. They say that from roughly 9am to 4pm are the most danger hours, obviously with midday being the hottest part of the day is the very, very high danger point. So if you're definitely going out in the sun, even if it is for 5-10 minutes, I would still recommend wearing sun cream. Checking your body for moles and things like that. Now, the main thing that you want to look for is a new mole or a new freckle that comes up or an existing one that has changed appearance. Um, either the shape, the colour, the size, anything like that. You just want to keep an eye on the existing moles that you have. The sun will definitely cause moles and freckles on your skin. On average, I found a statistic that children in Australia before they're the age of 15 will have roughly 50 moles caused by the sun on their skin, moles or freckles. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that those moles appear in areas that are normally exposed to, your, to the sun. They can definitely appear in areas that aren't. It just depends on your skin cells and where your body decides to put them. So obviously, I'm going to link as much information in the description box as I can for you guys. But there's so many different types of skin cancers and melanobas and things like that. Um, I've just pretty much written just a very quick overview of things that you need to look out for. So as I said, new spots or existing spots that change colour, size or shape. Also, you should look out for spots that won't heal. Things that tend to flake or that bleed very easily and just won't seem to heal. Moles or freckles that are raised or uneven in skin colour. They could be red or pink or even brown or black. There is like a rough um, kind of guide that they have on the Cancer Council um, website, which is ABCD. So things that you need to consider when you're looking at your moles or rechecking them to see if they've changed. The A stands for asymmetry, so whether it lacks symmetry. If it's perfect circle on one side and then it's all weird shaped on the other side. So if it's asymmetrical, that's definitely something to look for. Uh, the border, so if it's growing larger, if the edge seems to be seems to kind of be feathering out or just getting a little bit blotchy or uneven. Uh, colour, so if the colour is definitely uneven, if it ranges from darkness to lightness or the colour changes. And last one is diameter. So again, if it's growing larger, if it's getting a little bit spreaded, you need to look at that as well. There's a company called Molmax and I'm not sure if they're overseas, but they're definitely in Australia. But basically they go around all of Australia um, or they have their own clinics where you can go in and they actually look at your moles up close and they can help decide whether they're cancer or if you need to have them removed or if they want to get a little sample or get them cut out. So I definitely recommend that all of you need to go and have a look at least, I'd say minimum yearly, but twice yearly would be ideal. Again, I will link all the, the website information that I found out in the description box and I really hope that you guys can check it out because it's so important. Okay, so how to care for your skin in the sun. Um, growing up in Australia, you've probably heard of the slip, slop, slap, seek, something like that. Um, slip on a hat or slip on some sunny, slap on a hat, cover your skin, find some shade and obviously slop on some sun cream. <laughs> um, I remember growing up and seeing those ads all the time. I remember in school you actually weren't allowed outside to play at lunch or recess if you didn't have a hat. <laughs> and I remember you get, had to be stuck inside or you had to sit under this one tree for the whole lunch or recess and it was awful. <laughs> 
Um, sun cream is so important and I know that so many people are like, I don't want to look greasy or I don't want to wear it or it gives my face a white cast. I've got sun cream on my face at the moment and my skin looks very, very normal. It looks even. I'm going to take a photo with a flash so you guys can see it doesn't give my face a white cast. So I know that is one of the main deterrents. Um, obviously, sun cream does come in many different varieties and I know there's a massive a range of sun creams out there on the market today. The main two are, I know it sounds kind of scary, chemical sun cream or physical sun cream. Now physical sun cream tends to be the one that is the thicker, whiter kind of consistency. It's harder to rub in and that is more of the one that will tend to give you a white cast. Whereas the chemical sun cream is one that just blends in effortlessly. It's more of a lotion, um, doesn't give you a white cast and just is a lot easier to work with. Um, I will link again some of the active ingredients in the description box which separate the two so you can kind of know what one to look for when you're looking for a new sun cream. They range obviously from like 10 plus right up to I think 60 plus something like that um, and I always go for the highest one that I can find. Basically what the SPF 15 or whatever that means is just for instance SPF 15 means you have 15 minutes longer before your skin starts to burn. So I know that most sun creams are like four hours plus but after that 15 minutes it starts to diminish and your skin will start to burn. So it is always important to make sure that you have some with you and keep reapplying it even before the four hours or the two hours is up. So just keep on top of it and keep reapplying the sun cream. The one that I've been loving at the moment is the Sports Sun Cream and this is by the Cancer Council. The reason why I purchased this one is because it helps fund cancer research, patient support and education and it's also made in Australia. Um, obviously if you live overseas you can find one that will help support your local Cancer Council or uh, anything like that. Just find the one that works well for you. Uh, the reason why I love this one is it is SPF 50 plus so it's the highest one that I could find and just make sure when you're looking for a sun cream that it is broad spectrum. Broad spectrum means as UVA and UVB protection because both rays are harmful for your skin and you need to protect from both rays. Uh, this is as I said the sports sun cream um, is extremely high protection and it's sweat resistant so the sweat won't run into your eyes. I love this because I do go to the gym pretty much every day and I sweat my ass off when I'm in the gym so it's good to have something that's not going to run and it's not going to sting or burn your eyes. A very important thing that most people tend to forget about sun cream is you need to wait roughly 15 to 20 minutes before going into the sun after you've applied it. It does take that little bit of time just to get active and just to kind of work and absorb onto your skin. Now the chemical sun cream actually absorbs the sun rays whereas the physical sunscreen the more white one just bounces them directly off. That I think is what gives you that kind of white cast is because it's bouncing off whereas this one just basically absorbs them and it breaks them apart it doesn't obviously absorb into your skin it, the sun cream itself just absorbs and breaks apart the sun rays so as I said sun cream is pretty much your number one guard I put it everywhere I put it on my face it's really important not to forget about your ears behind your ears the back of your neck everywhere pretty much everywhere is where I put this if you're worried about it going on your skin I haven't noticed any clogging of my pores or anything with this I know you can definitely get more um, ones that are directed just for your face just for protection I've actually got this one which is Sunsense daily face SPF 50 it's an invisible tint finish um, it says it's UVA, UVB, sun protection, matte formula, oil-free cream base, and it's made and tested in Australia. So the great thing about this one is it does have a... Oh, hello. It does have <laughs> a little bit of like a tinted colour to it, but I personally I feel it gives you no coverage at all. But um, that's just a little bit more of a, like a lighter consistency. So if you do have issues with oiliness on your face, I'd probably go for something like that rather than the full-on sun cream. These still have the same SPF protection, so you just got to find what works well for you. Another thing that people tend to forget about is they think, all right, you know, I've got sun cream on, I'm fine, I'm good to go. But your lips and your eyes also need protection. I wouldn't recommend putting this on your lips just because you probably end up swallowing it and it would probably taste like crap and not be that good for you. <laughs> so an, a lip cream that or a lip balm that I've been loving is actually the Blistex. Uh, this is a lip conditioning balm and it's FPF 20. Oh, sorry, it's SPF 30 plus. 
um, it protects also against the cold like air conditioning things like that inside and wind so it's definitely going to help keep your lips hydrated it does have a very very subtle sheen to it um, but the main reason why I got it was because of the sun cream um, protection in it. It is also uh, endorsed by the Skin and Cancer Foundation of Australia, aids in the prevention of skin cancer, helps prevent and relieve dry, cracked and chapped lips, and also helps block out UVA and UVB rays while, con while containing vitamin E to protect against moisture loss. So I find this is really, really great. I'm actually going to put some on at the moment. <laughs> Mine went through the washing machine. <laughs> Who else's lip balms? Oh, I find if I lose a lip balm nine times out of ten, it's in the washing machine. <laughs> but yeah, it just gives your lips just a very subtle sheen and makes your lips feel incredible. Also, eye protection. It goes without saying. So many people these days, however, buy sunnies just for the looks. And I mean, I know they are a fashion type statement, but it is so important to get sunglasses that meet Australian standards for eye protection that are actually going to be doing their job, that not that are not just there for fashion. The ones that I've been loving at the moment are my sunglasses by Key. Um, I always used to think it was pronounced Quay, but it is actually Key. Uh, these are just cool. Um, I like the rainbow effect in them, but they protect against the sun and they do their job. Also just another memo um, to look out for, if you are wanting an extremely high gloss or even like purple ointment, just be very careful when you wear that out in the sun because it can actually blister your lips, especially the pawpaw ointment because it is more of an oil consistency. So I would recommend applying the lip balm underneath and then put the pawpaw over the top if you really want to use the pawpaw, just because you don't want to actually be burning and blistering your lips. <laughs> I hope that you guys have found this video helpful and I really hope that I change some of your minds and some of your attitudes about sun care. I really just want to reiterate this and I'm not trying to scare any of, any of you but it is so important. You're, you only get one skin and I know that skin cancer can definitely spread into other parts of your body and can become more more of a lethal type of cancer so it is so important and I mean I just don't want to see anyone go through the same thing that my mum's gone through at the moment and I just yeah, I just really want to beg you guys to look after your skin, especially when you're young. This is the most important time and you will thank me for it, I swear. In 10 years time, when you have the gorgeous, most useful skin still, you will definitely thank me. So, alright, I love you all and I'll see you guys in my next video. <laughs> Bye!